This is the first piece of backing fabric for my velvet coat. And the fabric has to be literally hand sewn onto the frame. I'm staying about a month at a time in each place. I'm moved into this beautiful cottage and then I am going back to Colorado. So the velvet is gonna go in my suitcase with me and the frame I'm gonna to mail to myself. You can see now why there was a strange seam in the velvet down here on the original coat. That is parallel to the center front edge. So these pieces here fit perfectly on my embroidery frame. I just need to attach the first piece of velvet onto here and we can get started. So you find me at last, at last, we're actually embroidering stuff. We've, it's taken about a year and a half to get to this point. And uh, believe me, I was excited and relieved as you are to get to this point. So you saw me in the last video getting the velvet onto the frame. So now I have taken these pieces. This is just my dust sheet to keep the dust off it. So I don't have to put everything away at night. I've laid my pattern on the velvet. I have marked around the edge by thread marking. I've actually sewn a running stitch in white thread around the edge of the pattern, around the seam line. So it sews the layers together and marks out clearly where the edges are. So I'll have a very clear line later on to sew the coat up. I did use chalk in one place, but basically I've just gone around the edge. I just pinned the pattern down and just went around the edge. And when it comes to doing the first few leaves, I've been transferring the markings through for each leaf with pins. I mean, you're supposed to, traditionally, you use a method called prick and pounce, which means you would take the pattern, the paper pattern, and use the tracing wheel that you've seen me use before to make a line of holes, and then you'd rub chalk powder through, and then draw over the chalk powder. I decided in the end that it's not gonna work for me in this instance, partly because putting that pattern wheel through the paper, you have to have something underneath it so it doesn't damage any of your surfaces. And here I'm clearly in somebody else's home. 
So it was like, uh, do I go to Home Depot and buy cork boards or something? Then I just have to carry them around with me. So how do you know it's messy? And is the chalk going to mark the velvet? And what about the nap? Is the nap going to move where the chalk is? It, it just felt like a messy option for velvet and a messy option for my situation traveling like this. So I've marked around the edge. So far, I believe I've noticed that with this pattern, seems like by marking the leaves one by one and doing the leaves, they kind of map out where the stems are and where the flowers are. This isn't a super geometric or symmetrical pattern. It's quite organic. So although I've drawn out the pattern and I'm trying to do it as precisely as I can, it's flowers, it's leaves. It doesn't have to be perfectly you know, aligned in every place. So I'm using them more as a guide and that means I can be a little bit loose with them. So I'm doing the leaves first and then I'm kind of going to do the stems in between just to follow along where the leaves are. The leaves are going to map out the pattern for me. So that's the method so far. It seems to be going well so far. I'm loving actually the way these leaves are coming out because stitch by stitch, I'm trying to make them move and look three-dimensional and have life. I'm an amateur embroiderer, but I'm trying to, to do this so it isn't just like leaf, leaf, leaf and make it look like it has some life. So some of these, they kind of take on a life of their own as I try to curve them around in the same shape as the original ones. So sometimes I've noticed there's an element of surrender with this, with embroidery. When you're sewing a garment together, you've got to do it very precisely on the seam line, do it right. I feel like with this, there's been more of a sense of surrender, as in, if I'm supposed to curve a leaf around to this point here, this is where it ends, and it just naturally, stitch by stitch, starts to curve a bit further that way. I'm not stressing out about it. I'm kind of surrendering to it and going, well, this is my leaf. It's going to be along the lines of the original, close to the original, but I'm doing it my way too. So I like that sense of surrender with it. I had a a message here from Feridad on Instagram as I was posting pictures as I'm going with these first few leaves. Feridad said, I have to ask, were the first few leaves utterly terrifying or incredibly satisfying to stitch or both? They were not terrifying at all. Once I actually mapped out the shape of the pieces, you know, the first stitches were in. So now I've got the pieces mapped out. It's much easier to do the leaves on them because I've got the shape in place. You know, it's like doing that first cut in the fabric. I've got the stitches in white. I've got the pieces of the coat mapped out. So it's actually been quite easy to do this. And so satisfying, not scary at all. Just I'm just in a state of joy because I finally, after a year and a half planning this project and mapping it out, making the pattern and checking the pattern and then making the mock-up and all of it, finally I get to actually do the embroidery. So I'm just full of a real sort of gratitude and joy. I was willing to do the work to get to this place where I've now got a pattern I'm sure of. I don't have to sit here worrying like, oh, I hope this comes out right when it's done. I know it's going to come out right. I've got pieces the right shape, I've got them mapped out on the fabric and I know what I'm doing and it's just because of all that preparation I'm able to have the joy now of just doing stitch by stitch and knowing it's going to come out right because I've done the prep work. It's very very satisfying to come to that point. It's the gift of doing something with embroidery that's plants is it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned with the pattern so that's a lot of fun. We talked in the last video about my routine and how I was feeling like I was having trouble finding the time because, oh, my business needs me. So I started to think about routine a bit more. I had a project I did about 14 years ago where there was a huge amount of embroidery, an oak leaf dress with just oak leaves and branches all over it. And I was very successful with that project. I did it in plenty of time for the deadline I had. And I was working on that with a very, very rigid routine. I was working five hours every morning, 7.30 till 12.30. I had this very rigid routine that fit very well into my lifestyle at the time. So because my partner at the time was going out at 7.30 in the morning to work, I was able to start at 7.30, be ready when she left, and then, you know, off I went until 12.30. It just worked, and it worked to be in that very formal routine. This time, I'm trying to do the same, and it hasn't been working. So every time I found as I started this month, as soon as I moved into this place, I would find, okay, yes, I'm going to do two hours tomorrow morning. You know, my business is bigger than it used to be. I can't do five hours every morning, but two hours, maybe I can get away with that. 
okay, two hours from nine o'clock tomorrow morning, I'm gonna be working on my embroidery. And then somehow it wouldn't happen. I would be pottering about, I would be procrastinating. Sometimes I would just sleep in. And every time in that first week or so, I was just kind of collapsing into that space that I'd created in order to do this. Over and over again, I'd just collapse into that two hours and just rest. And then I guess it occurred to me that, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be beating myself up about this and saying, no, tomorrow, tomorrow, I will be at nine o'clock, I will be embroidering. Maybe I actually just needed to rest. Maybe my body was telling me I needed to rest. So I just let myself rest for as long as I needed to. I admit it's been a big couple of months of the moving and the business stuff. There's been so much going on. It was like, okay, maybe I need to, if my body is just collapsing into that space every morning, maybe that means I need rest and I just need to surrender to that and give myself what I need instead of sort of my mind and my ego being, yes, we're going to do this this time. Maybe my body knows better. Maybe my heart knows better. So I start collapsing into that space. And sure enough, after about a week, boom, I was up at half past four in the morning, <laughs> which isn't normal, but now I'm finding I do have the energy and the space to do it. So there's a theme coming out of here of surrender. Surrendering to how the embroidery is going to look, surrendering to how it's going to turn out, surrendering to what I need so that my heart can be in this space and so that I'm not just leading with my head. This has been a theme in my life lately of not just like barging ahead with my head telling me, yes, we're going to do this, this and this, and this is how this is going to work out. It's probably not going to work out that way. So I'm in a space of learning how to listen to my heart and listen to my, what my body needs and just go with the flow a little bit more. So that is an interesting adventure to be on for somebody who's been so head-based as I am. It's amazing how much you learn when you start a creative project. It's not just about the sewing and the embroidery. most important thing I need to do to make maximum progress on this embroidery next month is to put together an unshakable sewing practice. What I mean by that is a reliable ritual that makes it really easy for me to get to this chair and actually work on this project really regularly. Now I actually taught a workshop on how to do this a couple of years ago and now I need to revisit it and take my own advice. So when I do that I'm going to share I'm going to teach that class online again this coming month. It's going to be free, so you can join in and learn with me and make your sewing into a practice that you spend time on regularly without guilt. I want to really help us all ensure that our most cherished projects actually get done without needing like, a huge deadline stressing us out and breathing down our necks. We live in a very busy, distracted world now, and I think we owe it to ourselves to find real, actual strategies to get off our addictive phones, which are really addictive now, genuinely addictive. Stop just constantly putting our projects onto the back burner and make and finish more of the real clothes that we dream about so we can actually enjoy wearing them. If that sounds interesting to you, if you're with me and you'd like to take part, the link to the sign up for that free class is up here and in the description below. And I'll put a link at the end of this video as well. And by the way, if you're watching this video later, there should still be a free class coming up at that link, but it might be on a different subject. So click the link anyway to find out what the current class is. We really want to start doing more free classes at Foundations Real to be a bit more accessible and give a bit more back. So click the link if you'd like to join us for that first class about how to build an actual sewing practice so you are actually doing your sewing regularly and getting stuff done. And I will see you there.